Many people have asked me for an update uh, since my last video on my cataract surgery. So I finally put one together. This is not the, uh, the final one. I've got uh, three more in the works that are going to cover the before, during, and after of the surgery. I'm going to apologize for using PowerPoint. If I try to do this from memory and try to wing it, eh, it's, it's going to be a rambling mess. So uh, forgive me, but this will keep me organized. Let's do the disclaimer thing. I'm not a doctor. I'm not medically trained. I am sharing what happened to me with my experiences. Always get your advice from your doctor. Uh, yeah, medical advice, diagnosis, treatment. Don't get it from me and certainly don't get it from the internet. As a refresher or for those who have not seen my earlier videos, three years ago, I had cataract surgery in my right eye and they remove the natural lens and they replace it with basically a piece of plastic. So if we look down here, uh, you'll see this is the natural lens inside the yellow circle. And what they do is they go in there, they make a small puncture, they insert a special tool, they slice it up, they pull out the pieces they, and they slide in a new one. And in the process, they remove the front of what is called the capsular bag it's a, a thing that surrounds a membrane that surrounds the lens and they remove the front part of that. So that's the uh, basics on the procedure. Um, let's see, where were we? The doctor miscalculated it and uh, she put in a correction that was too much. So I'm very far sighted in my right eye right now. Uh, in fact, I had a auto refractor uh, done on my uh, my right eye that's the machine the computer machine that will automatically measure your eye and it's so far out that the machine just gave an error it wouldn't actually measure it they had to do it uh, the old-fashioned way with the, with the thing they put over your eyes yeah um, so what I've learned since is my eye is not normal so if we look at a normal curve most people are in this area I'm way out here uh, I've got several factors about my eye that make it very different. Put me out here. Um, these differences uh, affect the amount of correction. So some of those differences are my eye is larger. Uh, I have a thicker, flatter cornea, which is this part up here. And what else did I say? The thinner retina. So yes, we'll talk about that a little bit. So this part back here is thinner uh, than most people's. So all of these things affect the amount of correction. The lesson learned is eyes are not standard. Um, hopefully yours are closer to the center than mine. The second doctor I saw after the surgery, uh, she caught this and she, yeah, she realized right away that my eyes are not the same. And if I had gone before my surgery, I'd not be making these videos and I would not have the problems. As a result, right now, I have uh, one eye OL that's uh, nearsighted. So this is the new one I had done. And I'm, I asked them to make it uh, nearsighted. And then I have this one, which is the original one, which was not done correctly. And it is very farsighted. Glasses and IOLs, uh, they create different size images in your eye. And yeah. Uh, so you cannot, people just say, like when I had this one, they just said, well, wear glasses and, you know, quit complaining. Well, the glasses and the IOL create different size images on the back of your eye. Your brain interprets that as different distances. And so you'll either feel dizzy all the time or you'll, you just, there's a very strange feeling of you can't tell how far away something is because your brain is saying, oh, it's this far away and your other... Uh, part of your brain is saying it's only this far away and yeah they just that nah, doesn't work so you get dizziness you get loss of depth perception it's uh, not a good thing so uh, my left uh, right eye difference was around three diopters some countries they call it 300 but three diopters and with high diopter distances glasses will also give you double vision so this is why I had my eyes checked recently. I went to the eyeglass store to see if I could just live with what I got right now. And of course they have those frames where they can insert the, uh, the different lenses. And so he got the correct ones for me, put them in there. And if I'm looking straight ahead, everything is very clear. It's great. But as soon as I move my eyes, 
uh, everything goes double vision. So, and it's not just like a little blurry. It's like they completely separate and then they join back together and then they separate and they join back together. And it's like this and like this. All I have to do is move my eyes and it can be up, down. It can be at an angle like this. That's a really weird one. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, what else? Uh, so in the four years since my, uh, messed up surgery, my left eye, the, uh, the, uh, uh, cataract was shortening. And so, uh, it got down to the point where about three inches or 10 centimeters. So I could only see about this far in front of my eye. So I, I was getting forced to do something cause this one's terribly farsighted. This one's terribly nearsighted and glasses won't fix that. Um, also the capsular bag in my right eye. So that's the thing I mentioned earlier. That's about where this yellow circle would be. After about uh, 30 some percent of cataract surgeries, there is uh, opacification of the capsular bag. So in other words, it starts turning cloudy. They used to call this a secondary cataract. And uh, yeah, the procedure is to go in there and remove that. But once it's removed, you can't do anything else. Surgeons won't touch you. So I was getting to the point where this eye wasn't functioning well and this eye was so close I couldn't do anything. So nature, nature backed me into a corner. Okay. After my initial surgery, I uh, began the, the research and the learning that I should have known before the surgery, before I ever went to the first doctor. After surgery, I've seen six doctors. Um, and none of them have had the specialization to fix my issue. Uh, they won't do lens swaps or whatever. That's kind of a special, uh, a special skill. And so I finally got a new top shelf doctor, a doctor who can do this kind of thing. He has different training. He, he's, it's in a different hospital. He has different equipment and he has different skills. So the first thing I did is I went to see this new doctor and he did the usual exam. Uh, the, he sent me off to his text and they dilate my eye and they took photos. You can see over here. Um, then after all that took effect, I went and met with a doctor. He did a close exam and he found my uh, left eye, which still has the natural lens or had the natural lens, uh, had some issues. And so he ordered high res photo scans of both eyes. And then uh, I had to wait an hour for everything to uh, take effect. They did the scans and then I went to see the doctor. So part two of that, of the uh, first appointment was he showed me these high res scans of my eyes on a big screen TV, like you see over here. And that really helps because they're not just talking about a generic eye. You're seeing your eye on that screen and he can point to every little detail. He can blow this thing up. He can look, he can show you the back of your eye and all that stuff. Yeah. And that really, really helps. I mean, you can really relate to seeing your eye and, and the issues on it. And in fact, here you can see a small defect right there. Um, so, uh, the left eye discussion I had with him. Now, again, remember this is for me and you need to get your own, uh, information from your doctor. He has stopped using accommodating lenses. So an accommodating lens is actually flexible and it will, uh, move. So just like your natural lens, it will focus. And so one lens will allow you to see far and near. The problem is, as you get older and you probably noticed, uh, your eyes don't want to focus with a natural lens and you see people more and more wearing the cheaters. Well, that's why. So the accommodating lenses, what happened was they, uh, they don't really work after age 50 something and they cost a lot more. So, yeah, weak eye muscles after the age of 50 something caused those just not to work well. He did not recommend the new ultraviolet adjustable lenses. So this is you go into surgery and after surgery, you're required to wear ultraviolet sunglasses uh, to keep out ultraviolet light. And after about two weeks of stabilization, they bring you back in and they uh, adjust the correction of your eyes using ultraviolet light. There are some problems with it. It's very new. Uh, there have not been a lot of patients. So, you know, you're kind of in the experimental phase. His procedure and his equipment, what he does is he can measure and test while you're in surgery. And so 
Um, yeah, you're laying there on the table. He has uh, what's called a laser interferometer and they remove the lens, the natural lens out of your eye because it's cloudy and it's got a, ca a cataract in it. And so then they shoot this laser in there and through magic computers and lasers, they can measure the inside of your eye uh, to the front of your eye exactly and get the, the correction for you without the interference of that cloudy lens in the way. And also instead of ordering just one lens and using calculations and sticking it in there, they use the laser uh, measurements to take the exact measurement of your eye at that time. And then they have a box of lenses and they select the one that the device tells them to use. And they put that on there based on real time measurements. So that's very interesting. We, uh, in our initial consultation, we decided to go with the 30 to 40 centimeter target range. So this is like, you know, I can look at my phone, I can read a book, I can read the computer screen in front of me. Um, so it's really good for a computer reading and hobby. Again, it will depend on what your interests are and what your needs are. So for me, he suggested using this Technic, Technus iHance IOL or the JNJ model ICB00 for my left eye. And uh, they're both extended range monofocal. So they're not the multifocal. They're not the ones with the rings and all that stuff. They're just strictly a, uh, a monofocal like this one down here. And so we chose the ICB00 uh, zero zero with just you know nothing in particular uh, no particular reason it just uh, I could not tell the difference between the two when I looked at the specs but he he said okay if you don't have a preference then let's go with this one um, he chooses scalpel incisions so he says I can do the laser incision on you cost more and he said there's no benefit over using the scalpel and my research showed the same thing that uh, there some people claim a slighter uh, improvement in healing times, but uh, actually it's uh, the uh, outcome of this research was almost in the noise. And also, uh, or finally, I should say my scans showed a hole and detachment in my uh, retina in my left eye. And that had to be fixed at least a month before I did the cataract surgery. So while I was there, while my eye was already dilated, we just decided to go ahead and uh, do that. To continue on, uh, we discussed also the options for my right eye. So this is the one that had the uh, wrong correction IOL inserted. And he went through, he made the same comments about the accommodating lenses, the UV adjustable and the multifocal lenses. And he just, just not, not in favor of that. Uh, also, my right eye has had prior surgery, so this capsular bag can be weakened uh, when they're in there and they're uh, cutting this thing up and they're pulling pieces out and whatever. It can put a lot of stress on the back side of the capsular bag. Remember, the front side is already gone. They've removed that. But the back side uh, can have a lot of stress on it. And they use the back side of this bag to position the, the uh, new... IOL and this is extremely critical with the multifocal lenses because the multifocal lens uh, has to go in there I mean on all axes so it has to go in there this way not this way or this way or tip this way or this way or rotated wrong or anything like that it has to go in there exact and this bag helps not only position that IOL going in there but it helps hold it in position until your body has attached to the little ears on the IOL. Uh, and again, the multifocal is much more critical about that than the monofocal. So he definitely recommended the monofocal. The, uh, for me, a uh, multifocal in the right eye would be much higher risk and he doesn't recommend mixing the lens types. So, uh, putting a, a monofocal in one and a multifocal in the other, uh, some people have done it and I've read things on the internet. Some people are happy with it. Others are like, it drives them crazy because they see rings with one eye and not the other and so on. Uh, so pretty much, uh, my right eye needs are driving, uh, the left eye needs. And that's what ended up happening. If I'm going to do an IOL swap. So if they're going to remove the old IOL out of here, it's, a, and that's a big deal. They have to do it before. I have uh, what's called a YAG capsulotomy. So as the backside of the bag is turning uh, opaque, as it's getting cloudy, uh, there's a technique where they use a YAG laser and they just 
you know, shoot it into your eye and they cut away the back side of the bag to get rid of the cloudiness. Well, if the bag's not there, they can't position the IOL and most surgeons will not touch an eye that has had the, the, uh, the uh, bag removed all the way around. So to continue on with our right eye discussion, um, the four choices that, uh, that were, for me anyway, uh, safest to riskiest. The first one is to do nothing and wait and uh, you know see if I can live with what I've got. If I can, then go ahead and do the YAG laser treatment. And again, that kind of seals the future. There's no changing from that point on. Um, glasses. So I would have one eye nearsighted and one eye farsighted and yeah it, it I, I mean I knew right away that it would be odd looking because one lens would dish in and the other curve out so one curves in one curves out so it would be odd looking yeah people would look at you kind of like what's wrong with you but I went and tried it and that's again why I had the the thing done they put them in there and it causes that severe double vision that I talked about earlier so yeah this won't work for me at all uh, another option is to laser the right eye to do a corneal ablation. That's a little bit like Lasix. And the problem with that is that the correction can change over time. And so I can end up with out being able to correct this eye anymore. So the, the, the laser treatment would be a final thing. Uh, the YAG treatment on the back side would also be done. So the laser treatment on the front uh, would be finished and then of course the doing the backside would finish out any options uh, on the inside of the eye so yeah that those those become all very uh, very permanent uh, the uh, lens swap is the highest risk and there are some very bad possible outcomes so one of the things is you can get corneal fogging and if that happens what they do is they go in and they uh, slice between the layers of the cornea and they remove the cloudy part and they insert a piece of cornea from a cadaver from a donor they call it I said I asked the doctor you mean a dead person a cadaver he said yes from a donor <laughs> I said okay uh, let's just be straight and then uh, you may have to take uh, I would have to take uh, what do they call it any rejection drugs for either a very long time or for the rest of my life the uh, the swap uses the same surgical uh, technique and equipment as the original IOL. The replacement would be the same J and J model ICB uh, OO on that. The left right plan uh, doing this would require glasses for most activities, uh, you know. So outside of reading and computer, but I've I've done that my whole life. So I've been you know that's that's what happened. I, that's what my life was before four years ago and I had the original surgery I wore glasses that was that was it the good thing is I may be able to drive again that would be uh, that would be nice but I'll be honest that frankly the lens swaps option scares me because there's many things that can go wrong and if it does it's really bad news okay uh, with the lens swap the correction possibilities are to set the right eye the same as the current left eye and then I would just wear glasses for nearsightedness again I did that my whole life so that would be very natural for me and the other thing is to set what they call monovision so my right eye would be set a little bit farsighted say 40 to 50 centimeters and uh, my left would stay at the 38 to 40 centimeters I may or may not uh, need glasses but there can be a depth perception issue uh, Oftentimes they will set these between 1.25 and 1.5 diopters. Again, check with your doctor. Okay, so at the end of the first appointment with this new doctor, uh, we went through and we did the laser photocoagulation uh, to my left eye to reattach the retina and close the hole and the machine looks like this. They strap your head in there and then they fire a... Uh, a bright green laser into your eye to reattach it uh, they uh, they went through the procedure afterwards I got checked and then they said you're fine to go home I did a separate video on this because this procedure applies to people regardless of age it can be caused 
Uh, you may need it because of sports injury or age or uh, eye impacts, anything like that. And I had a follow-up appointment the next month. Uh, he ensured that the laser treatment was successful. And then uh, we uh, scheduled the left eye surgery, which is now done for a month later. So a summary, the left eye now is done. And about four weeks ago, it was successful. Uh, again, the same J&J &J ICBOO for my left eye. I have good vision from about six inches to about 70 centimeters, uh, two feet. And I can read a book, a uh, computer without any glasses, anything like that. I have a future appointment for a checkup and to finalize the plans for my right eye. And I will make uh, a detailed video on that, uh, the uh, before, during, and after at that time. Some final thoughts. Uh, a lot of what we've gone over is very negative and when things go wrong, they can go really wrong. But just remember that it, it doesn't hurt to be cautious, but it doesn't help to be paranoid. 90 some percent of all IOL surgeries have really good outcomes. It changes people's lives for the better. So keep that in mind. A lot of my problem was I failed to do my research up front. That was the first problem. I depended on one doctor for almost all my information. It has always been considered a good idea to get multiple opinions from doctors before major surgery. Eye surgery is major surgery because when it goes wrong, it changes your life. Uh, it turns out that my eyes are different because of many small differences. They add up and puts me way out here on the curve. I'm not in the normal group. Um, yeah, so that's why I got bad results from my right eye surgery. If I had gotten two or three measurements from two or three different doctors, measurements, not just checkups, but actually gone through the measurement for the uh, IOL, they, the second doctor caught it. So yeah, I wouldn't have gone through all this bad stuff for the last four years. So yeah, I could have saved myself a lot of time, money, and grief uh, if I had just uh, gotten that, that second opinion because the second doctor caught it. Okay, well, that's it for this round. I hope you find that useful and interesting in your health care.